I'm toward the south end of Pacific Spirit Park now. Uh, Pacific Spirit Park isn't exactly a steep park, but there is a definite elevation gradient. It peaks toward the northern part of the park and then gradually goes downhill toward the southern part of the park. And that's reflected in differences in site series. So right now, we're definitely at a richer, wetter site series than we were uh, a bit earlier when we were seeing mostly Douglas fir. So if we look around right now, this forest has a lot more cedars, especially really big cedars like this. We don't see too many big cedars in the other part of Pacific Spirit Park. It's also really shady here. I don't know if you can tell from your view, but it's a little bit hard to film here actually because it's, a, it's full sun right now, but this particular spot is very densely shaded. There's a, a, particularly a lot of vine maple right around here. So remember vine maple is an indicator of richer soils and right around here there's a lot of vine maple and they're really intercepting all of that light that's coming in for, through the canopy. Here's a tree we haven't seen so far. This is a Sitka spruce, Picea sitchensis. So Sitka spruces, edaphic amplitude is much more on the wetter, richer end. So in the very dry uh, maritime subzone of the um, coastal western hemlock back zone. We don't see a ton of it, but we do start seeing it as we get to the wetter, richer site series like we're in here. Uh, it can get huge, it can be a massive tree. It's the largest spruce species. Its wood is very light and very strong, so it's been commercially desirable for a long time. Uh, it used to be used in airplane making. You can imagine being light and strong was a good characteristic for that. So especially during World War II, a lot of Sitka spruce on the coast of uh, of the Pacific Northwest of the, in the United States, uh, British Columbia and Alaska was harvested for making airplanes, especially the old growth Sitka spruce was especially good for that. Today it's still used for musical instruments and a, a number of other things. It's still valuable timber. We tend to find it on the coast a lot. One interesting characteristic about it is that it's really uh, resist or it's really tolerant of salt spray. So you'll find the, a lot of Sitka spruce on the west coast of Vancouver Island, for example, where it gets lots of uh, water as the waves crash when there are big storms, some of that water sprays up and some of that salt gets deposited along the shoreline. And a fair number of species aren't very tolerant of that, but Sitka spruce is and it actually gets some of its minerals from that salt spray. The bark is pretty identifiable. There's other spruces and they tend to have somewhat similar looking bark, but at least in, in this zone right here and at this elevation we know there aren't going to be any other spruces. The bark tends to have kind of this potato chip look to it. It has small plates and they tend to have curling edges. This one isn't displaying that quite as much as you sometimes see, but it's a pretty characteristic bark. The cones of Sitka spruce are also quite different looking than the other cones that we have. Hopefully you can see there the cone scales have these tiny little teeth, these tiny little serrations, and they're very thin and papery, so they, they are much more flexible than the cone scales on a Douglas fir cone, for example. So if you encounter this, in the CWH, it's pretty, pretty clear that this is going to be Sitka spruce. It looks very different than the cones for Douglas fir or Western hemlock. They're also quite a bit lighter in color, more of a light tan color, so quite distinct from the others.